Studies Arts and Social Sciences Data Enhanced Virtual Laboratory, um, better known as the Hass Devil. Okay. Um, so uh, this brings together. To can someone type in the chat if you can? Can hear someone us? type in the chat if they're able to hear us? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Uh, technical. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. So <laughs> let's start again. Uh, we're getting there. So 12 partners from around the country. It's a national collaborative project. It represents $1 million in total, including the co-investment, and it will be delivered within 2018. Um, some of our project partners are pictured here at a, one of our uh, project workshops that we held in Melbourne, and um, you can see the group of people who are involved in the logos at the bottom right of the screen there. Our aims include lowering barriers of entry, for digital HASS infrastructure, exploring and addressing interoperability issues between platforms for HASS data, working towards a more joined up landscape, data curation for better reuse, reproduction and republishing of research data, and multi-layered skills and training and peer mentoring opportunities. Research practices in humanities, arts and social sciences are going through a period of change with greater, greater availability of large scale data and increasingly accessible digital research tools. Um, we've chosen to focus on a few areas of focused activity to demonstrate value and impact for and to researchers. And we're taking advantage of community engagement aspects around the project to consult on further opportunities and extension of our work should further infrastructure support become available. I'll talk through the three areas of project activity that make up this devil. Um, the workbench environment will be an online space that will host tools and research and development opportunities in the one space. It'll be a central uh, location to access tools to be used in transcription, text analysis and geocoding in the first instance. So these three focus areas of activity were chosen as a result of consultation conducted last year and mapping of the research challenges that were common to the areas of humanities, arts and social sciences. This, this discipline brings together a very diverse group of researchers and when we sort of uh, mapped out certain research practices that people within these disciplines did, this was a, a selection of uh, focus points which could actually have research impact for that community and were common to a large group of them. Um, in some cases the workbench environment will offer guidance and support in using existing tools, in some cases the tools will be a hosted service and in the case of geocoding we're developing a chooser to aid researchers in finding the most useful geocoding resource for their need. Um, we have conducted, to date we've conducted consultation around the relevant tools and I'll talk a little bit about that later. We've worked up a prototype to test existing tools and explore their delivery in online space. You can see a snapshot of that there. This is a prototype which will help us go to user testing during August um, and gain further input on that. Uh, at a recent demonstration of the EcoCloud Explorer from the EcoScience Devil, we're considering a repurposing that framework to host a future iteration of the workbench. Some of you will be familiar with that because Gerhard um, kindly uh, reported on that at the last Tech Talk. Um, the EcoCloud Explorer is designed as a flexible modular framework that can provide data access points for a variety of sources, hosted tools, links to external tools, a space for storing users' own data and can host support materials, including training materials. One of the other benefits is that it will um, allow integration of Jupyter Notebooks and compatibility with other workspaces, including GitHub. This is one approach to the objective that we have of allowing users to share their own tools and workflows. This is very much still an idea, and this map here is literally our um, putting our thoughts down around it. We haven't had access to that framework just yet, but we're looking forward to exploring that during August. Um, the second project activity area is the data curation framework. The humanities research environment can be characterised by high value but fragmented data, tools and services. Um, researchers draw on a number of data sources, many of which are hosted by different institutions and in many of which are notionally accessible, being open, licensed and organised according to accepted metadata schema. Some are accessible via APIs. Our data curation team is exploring issues around interoperability and accessibility by working through certain processes with three reference data sets. Um, in order to reduce the variables in um, assessing these data curation issues, we've chosen to work with data sets that are open, 
um, as we've determined that sensitive data, while it will be a big issue for humanities researchers in the future, we can't address it within the scope of this project. So the reference data sets that we're working with are listed there, Trove's Australian Government Gazettes, a set of data from the Griffith University Prosecution Project around the crime of bigamy, and historical census records from the Australian Data Archive. What's happening is that this curation team is um, subjecting these data sets to particular transformations that would be useful to researchers as a way of testing their interoperability utility. Um, <clears throat> I won't go into detail to what transformations are being done to which data sets, but they're being passed through named entity recognition processes, um, geocoding processes, text analysis processes, um, and we're recording the challenges, both technical and social, that we experience along the way. The data curation team are presently working on a framework to help consider the various lenses through which the data curation process can be viewed, including how data is formed and alters, how data flows in and out of archives, and how data arises from and feeds into humanities research. The third area of activity is a skills and training work package. Um, the, this will be delivered in a couple of different ways, as standalone modules or workshops. It will have some online presence in the workbench and it will be delivered as a two-day intensive train the trainer program to a small group of researchers who have teaching responsibilities. This final champions program is another example of cross-devil work because it's inspired by the work that was done by the Biodiversity and Climate Change Virtual Laboratory last year. Um, that project demonstrated the ability of a train the trainer model to broaden the reach of their training activities. So all of this um, work will be accompanied by a program of community engagement, including a monthly e-newsletter, with regular updates of the House Devil, um, appearance at relevant conferences, and we'll be continuing our series of Digital Humanities Pathways events through the remainder of 2018. Um, this was a model of community engagement that we initiated last year, and they're made up of day-long project showcase interspersed with panel discussions and audience interaction. Um, these events were an excellent consultation forum in 2017, and we anticipate that they'll help us validate the aims and achievements of the project this year. Um, we are Adding to that pathways uh, format this year, um, inspired by our work with the Ecoscience Devil, um, and starting those days with an intensive executive session, which will consult with relative community leaders and decision makers. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the consultation that we've done to date um, and some of the discoveries we've had through that. Um, we, yeah, as we've as I've mentioned, all the project deliverables are being informed by consultation. We've had really positive feedback. Researchers have acknowledged the benefit of access to good web-based tools, um, the tools that we have uh, chosen to work on. And there was consensus for supporting tools that accommodate researchers without um, coding skills um, through to those who are comfortable working with um, more technical applications. Um, the researchers, one of, the, one of the things that emerged from consultation was that researchers we were working with required a lot of direction in how to manage and prepare their data or sort of a pre-processing stage of information. So workshops on both transcription and text analysis, um, the discussion of data handling, cleaning, assembling a corpus and preparedness to use the tools actually dominated discussion, which demonstrated a need um, to help work, workbench and tool users understand how to effectively um, uh, gather and prepare their data before using the tools. Um, accessibility of tools has arisen as a challenge. We're, open, we're aiming for our workbench environment to be um, welcoming and accessible and not something that you feel like you need to be a coder to use. So we're exploring a number of options in response to that challenge, including presenting um, one avenue into the tools as a series of recipes based on user, user pathways. And these will be um, designed around real and hypothetical research challenges um, that we've identified that make use of all of the tools and will be a, a segmented pathway through the, through the workbench for the user. Um, consultation has also, also already, as I imagine in many devil circumstances, um, led to um, opportunities that are out, outside of scope for the current project. So um, things like, so we have talked about text analysis, transcription and geocoding as the three main research practices that we wanted to work on. Um, but in consultations, other issues such as named entity recognition and guidance on the data lifecycle are areas of activity that would really impact research outcomes. So to a degree, our project team challenges, um, one of our challenges for our project team is how to incorporate those things where we do have the resources to, but avoid scope creep um, and consider what we might put into future projects. So I just wanted to finish on our objectives for the project. Um, we are, our main objectives are lowering barriers to entry for digital research um, tools for HAS researchers and democratising access. 
Our primary focus is building skills across the community, broadening, broadening the base and making digital tools, data and research methods more accessible for more people. Um, we need to be flexible, responsive and thinking about this as a basis for the future. Um, we're building a modular environment. It's one of the things that appealed to us about working with the EcoCloud framework that can be expanded and reconfigured over time. This is very much a starting point and can be a stimulus to further activity. Um, and as in going with that, um, we're thinking about this as a pathway to the next step. Um, this is concretizing, focusing and stimulating the conversation around these tools in this community and bringing the community together around a prototype that we can build on. We're building familiarity with the tools, the barriers and the opportunities so that the community is better informed and has the language to talk about the next step for supporting research infrastructure in humanities, arts and social sciences. Um, so looking forward, we will have Digital Humanities Pathways events carrying out through the rest of this year. Um, we will have a presence at these upcoming conferences, Digital Humanities Australasia in September and eResearch Australasia in October. And for the meantime, the best way to find out updates on the devil is to subscribe to ESS's Cultures and Community East newsletter with the, um, the URL is there on your screen. So thank you for that and um, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat window.